All right, guys, today we are going over what passive transport is and the function of the membrane. Um, so here are our objectives for our unit. We have finished evaluating the structure and function of cells and their components, um, and we are moving right into method of transport to include uh, gradients, osmosis, diffusion, turgor pressure, isotonic, hypotonic, and hypertonic solutions. So the cell membrane forms a boundary between the cell and its outside environment, and it controls what can and cannot enter and exit the cell. It's composed of two layers of phospholipids. A phospholipid is a molecule that is composed of three basic parts, a charged phosphate group, a glycerol, and two fatty acid chains. This is your typical structure of a phospholipid. You see your phosphate group right up here, our glycerol, and then two fatty acids. They can either be saturated fatty acids or unsaturated fatty acids. The main difference between them is that unsaturated fatty acids have a double bond um, where saturated fatty acids do not. The cell membrane is consistent of a double layer of phospholipids where the outer layer, your phosphate heads, are hydrophilic, meaning they are water loving. In the interior are your fatty acids, which are hydrophobic or water fearing. And then that layer of phosphate heads again. They're also interspread with a variety of other molecules that are responsible for the cell membrane. The phospholipids create a head and a tail. The head is polar with two tails on the inside that are nonpolar. The phosphate group and glycerol in the head create a charge that bonds with water as to why it is considered hydrophilic. The other molecules that get interspread throughout the membrane are cholesterol. Cholesterol's job is to strengthen the membrane. Proteins, which help molecules pass through the membrane. And carbohydrates, which act as identifying tags to allow cells to distinguish each other and to relay and give messages um, based off of what type of cell they are trying to reach. Here is that visual. We have our phospholipids up here with the fatty acid tails in the middle. These yellow guys right here are your cholesterol. You have proteins in that carbohydrate chain that says, hi, I'm a skin cell or hi, I'm a liver cell, or it may have a signal attached to it saying, I'm waiting for this signal from the brain. The cell membrane is said to be a fluid mosaic model. That describes the makeup of the cell membrane for two main reasons. First, that the cell membrane is flexible. Those phospholipids are able to move freely throughout the cell and across the cell membrane, usually staying on the side of the cell membrane that they are, but it allows for movement. Cell membranes are not rigid structures. They're not permanent. They're ever-changing. And then second is that the variety of molecules that stud the membrane resemble the arrangement of the colorful tiles that make up a mosaic. And mosaics are always random. No two cell membranes are gonna have the exact same placement of all three of these molecules. The cell membrane is said to be selectively permeable or semi-permeable. These two words mean the same thing, but it means that some molecules are able to pass through the membrane while others are not. This enables the cell to maintain homeostasis or a stable internal environment in spite of unpredictable and changing conditions that are happening outside of the cell. Our bodies maintain homeostasis all of the time to help our cells maintain homeostasis as well. Molecules can pass through the membrane in three different ways. First, small nonpolar molecules are able to pass right through the membrane without assistance. Second, small polar molecules must be transported through protein channels. And third, 
large molecules are have to be engulfed by the membrane in the creation or destruction of a vesicle. Cell membranes also secrete molecules and attach them to their carbohydrate chain that helps them identify what molecule they're looking for or what type of cell they're looking for. All molecules act as signals to communicate with other cells, and that could just be sending a signal somewhere or passing made proteins from cell to cell until it reaches its final destination. This is done by the use of receptors. A receptor is a protein that detects a signal molecule and then performs an action in response. Receptors recognize and bind to only certain types of molecules, ensuring that the right cell gets the right signal at the right time. A molecule that a receptor binds to is called a ligand. And when that ligand binds to the receptor, they change shape, causing something to happen. Commonly, it's causing or triggering a vesicle to be created for the cell to engulf something like a sugar, or it is opening up a doorway in a protein to allow molecules to pass through. So this would be your receptor here. They are flexible on one side and less flexible on the other. When the ligand binds, it changes shape, allowing molecules to pass through into the inside. We have intracellular receptors or intracellular proteins. These mean within or inside of the cell. These are molecules that cross the membrane and are generally polar that get into the receptor on the inside of the cell. But we also have receptors that sit on the membrane itself. These are molecules that cannot pass through the membrane and may have to bind to a receptor in order for them to get across. And that is passive transport.